All right, welcome to episode number eight of the O2 Dropcast, where if we don't talk about it, you shouldn't care about it. With us today, as usual, we have Mr. David Schakowsky. Hello. Daniel Espinoza. What up? And I am Zach Zent, and you are listening to probably the best podcast in the world, so you're welcome. On any subject. On any subject ever that was ever recorded for the past and future. Yeah. This is where we talk about the Arizona stuff that's going on. We're going to be talking about some other uh, legacy-related content for Magic the Gathering. Yeah. We're going to have a... A little bit of discussion about our recent legacy league here in Arizona. Yeah, that talk, was a fun one. Talk about some other some other shit, some other stuffs. Absolutely. But first of all, how was your week, Espy? Uh, it was great. Uh, work was uh, work was uh, not too bad, and then we got a condensed work week next week because we go into GP Niagara Falls. Yeah, boy. I'm hopefully I can still get the time off from work from that. And if you're my boss and you're listening. I lied about whatever reason I need the time off for. <laughs> Death in the family. Death. All the family is dead. Oh, oh you've already used that excuse up? <laughs> right. Um, my dog, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. That's your dog's one. dead. So yeah. your cat. No yeah. one likes cats, so like, they're really like, soulless oh, animals. Yeah. So. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I'll make up some reason. I'll find some good excuse. I'll get some terminal disease. There you go. If you have some good excuses for Zach, let us know. <laughs> Email us. <laughs> yeah. At Arizona Eternal Magic at gmail.com. We haven't been getting many emails and questions. Yeah. We haven't also been promoting questions. I also don't well. log in there, so I, I've never checked. So No. Has anyone looked at the Discord? There's stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. Oh, uh, all right. We're so this is amateur hour for the Arizona Eternal Magic Podcast. Uh, it's been a while since we did one of these, so apologize if you are an avid listener and you were waiting around for us. But um, we have a valid reason. We do. I mean, we could talk about that. So we had a big city championship a couple weeks ago, and the gentleman that won is far away. Yes, Christian Castro. Drove up from Tucson. He did drive up from Tucson with a lot of the guys to play, and that's about two hours away from here. Yeah. And uh, it's hard to get him on the podcast. As a podcast that's all about quality, we want him in on, on site to record with us, you know, because we don't want to compromise quality because our number one priority is our listener, right? Exactly. Also, I don't think we can Skype people in. Like, yeah. I think it's just... <laughs> We were talking about it before the podcast, before we were recording. And if you know how to do this in an easy way without buying a bunch of shit, let me know. But um, we're not exactly sure how to get the audio from Skype to come out while also being able to not hear that on the microphones that we have picked up. And still hear him. And, and so hear him and then also hear the rest of us in the room here. Without our mics picking up him. Without yeah. the mics picking up him coming out of yeah. speakers or headphones. Too I don't much. Know. Yeah, so... Anyways, Christian, if you're listening, sorry, buddy. We love you. We'll figure it out someday. We'll figure but, it out someday. But the important thing is, so that was our fourth event, uh, third of third event so far, <laughs> and it's the third event that a reliquary deck took down. Yeah. He took he took it down with a uh, four true. color uh, loam. So well, we also had the other PT. We d- and that is the the combo breaker, right? We had a yeah. PT. So first off. To recap, we had 58 players at Phoenix Gaming Lounge for our second C event. So that is our largest event so far. It was a, a little over a 1K in pricing. Uh, we had, I think, max viewers like 160 at, at peak, which was insane. So thank thank you, everyone, for being so amazing and tuning in on our, our Twitch channel. Um, but then last weekend, we had a PT at Connected Gaming in Glendale. And I think it was like 20, 20-ish players. Yeah. And, and uh, Sam Gilbert? Exactly. Sam Gilbert on Blue Red Delver took it down. So finally, there's a break in that chain Tight. of the Night Ducks winning. So Tight. So um, let's talk about how we did the events. So David? Uh, that day was my mom's birthday. Well, no, this, but you were there for the City Champs. Oh, the City Champs. Yeah. Um, I decided to play that event on Zero Sleep, 
which that's normally my way of playing an event. <laughs> But um, I went O2 at the beginning to support the podcast, obviously. And then um, me and Espy had to duke it out to see who would get the glorious O3. Which means that I was also O2. <laughs> Sweet. And uh, I ended up breaking even, going 3-3. Three, three, uh, but okay. an extra an hour of sleep probably would have done me pretty well. Yeah, and he would have taken the whole thing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But, you know, I got to let someone else go. Yeah, yeah when yeah. David Schakowsky gets sleep, you better watch oh, out. it's trouble. Trouble. It's fucking on, bro. Um, oh, yeah. So I got a full eight hours of sleep. <laughs> I was well rested. I ate lots of healthy food all week. I exercised. I practiced. And I didn't get my first win until round five when I was awarded the bye. Nice. That is fucking sad, dude. It was savage. It was a very disappointing day. Yeah. Uh, I was on the tried and true turbo depths. It just did not work out my way. Um, started off with the loss against Blue or Dover. Got Blood Moon game three where you could never find an abrupt mm. decay. And it was just downhill from there. But I had a blast. Um Zach, you did not play, but you did stop by. Uh, I do want to shout out. I feel like we shout him out all the time for either weird decks or just bad luck. Uh, Tony Hare drawing in the top eight and getting ninth place. And they had to go to the second set of breakers because it was so close. But I think he did. Like the store felt bad. Uh, Josh at PGL is amazing. So they felt bad and they gave him some credit or whatever. And he got some packs of Masters 25 and cracked a Jace the Mind Sculptor, which is like a $100 bill. So yeah. But yeah, ninth place. Come on. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But. No, I did terrible, so we switched decks. Cool. And then I played in the PT um, that how'd, we had. How'd you do there? Very poorly. Very nice. Yep. So I played turbo depth. No, I played slow depth, excuse me, uh, which I'm not very experienced with. I need like some get them guides and sideboarding stuff because I do want to get into it. I don't know it as well as other decks that I play. So like Miracles or Stoneblade or Delver or some shit like that, Sneak and Show. Like I have a pretty good idea of what I'm supposed to do, but Turbo Depths is kind of... Or not Turbo Depths, god damn it. Uh, slow Depths is kind of weird. So I don't know like when to side out Mox Diamonds and go I like, don't think more you really casual ever do. with the win and like go into the control. And I don't know when like Safe Keepers really come out or that kind of stuff. Because I know you can... Take out the safe keepers or possibly Sajiri step for more hand hate in some matchups. But I will tell you this you take out Sajiri steep against Dildrazi. That's a little pro tip right there. That's a good pro tip. Yeah. Yeah, they don't yeah, have anything welcome. to you're balance welcome. your shit, huh? Oh, Sajiri steep doesn't protect from that. It protects from colors. Yeah. And they're devoid colors too. Yeah. of color. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Right. Uh, I think I think we're doing a really good job at like identifying as like really bad players that are always O2 dropping, <laughs> but people listen to us, which is weird. Yeah, because we're they all should've. we're doing so bad. Because I think I, I started off that event O2 as well. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But luckily, I brought my Switch and played some Smash Brothers. So now, welcome to the O2 Smash Cast, where we drop and play Smash, and then we talk about it on the podcast. So mm-hmm. who's your main and? Uh, in Smash, David. It is Young Link. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, my favorite character going back <laughs> all the way to Melee. Espy's and... shaking his head. You can't see it. Yeah. yeah. It's a great It's a great game. It's I, good. I'm going to get a Switch someday. You should. Yeah. You should. I use my Switch a lot. Nice. Yeah. So the PT went well for Sam Gilbert and bad for you and I. Yeah. It was a good turnout, though. What was it? Like 19, Tw- 20 20-ish, people? 20 players. Yeah. So that was a good turnout. Yeah. Yeah, especially for a Saturday in, out, out in Glendale. Yeah. No. Uh, Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix North, yeah. Wherever it is, is very yeah, far. North Phoenix. It's 30 miles. So whatever. Whatever, though. It was a good time. Yeah, it was a good time. That's a good shop up there. And so, uh, we, you know, we played in the PT. We did poorly there. But we have um, our city champs next month coming up at Snapcasters Gaming and Espresso. On May 18th. That is in Central Phoenix, which is central for everybody. It is. That's what it means when it's central. Yeah. Yeah. See? (laughs) Figuring it out. Don't forget we have a PT in Tucson to allow the players that drive up all the time to have an event close by on May 11th. Yes. Uh, I thought that was Snaps on May 11th. No, that's Mm -hmm. Tucson. Oh. Yeah. When Snaps then? The 18th. 18th. The 18th. Okay. The week after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
So you can score some points if you're down in Tucson. Sweet. Yeah, they don't need to. They're just going to come down and win all of our city champs. Yeah. No shit. We should go down there and just disrupt. Not even like win. Just make it. Just just play defense. Just play prison decks. Just play prison decks. Just make it so no one goes undefeated. Yes. Perfect. From Tucson. Yes. I like it. You play Phoenix guy, of course. You just yeah, yeah, you yeah, scoop, yeah. scoop yeah. in. Exactly. Yeah. I'll bring Belcher. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So... We're doing really bad at magic, but I've I've been playing a little bit of slow depths, and I know SB, you've been playing Blue Red Delver quite yes. a bit. That's your new jam. You've been playing it on MTGO. You've been playing it in paper a lot. You've been practicing, and you're doing really shitty with it. No, I'm, uh, I'm only I like our I'm live. Just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> what? So tell me a little bit about why you think it's the best deck ever made. Well, first off, I don't think it's the best deck ever made. Um, but no, at, at our city event at PGL, I did notice there were a lot of players on the deck. And, you know, watching some of the matches, Terramander seems pretty powerful. So I figured, I'd you know, I have all the cards. I'd pick it up and try it. Um, and I really I really enjoyed, like, the power of it of the deck, the disruptive, mm-hmm. you know, the destructive components. Um, and I think it's a really good deck and, you know, in the short time frame of like a month, month and a half to prepare for Niagara Falls, it's a deck that you could easily pivot to. And if you grind enough leagues on Moto, you could kind of figure it out. Whereas decks like Miracles, you really need to dedicate a long amount, a, a greater length of time to yeah. master, if you will. Like I wouldn't say I've mastered it, but I'm very familiar with it now and I feel comfortable playing the deck in, in Niagara Falls next weekend. So, cool. um, but yeah, I, I love the deck. I think it's very resilient and as Playing on Moto has helped me kind of tune my paper list. So, for example, one of the one of the matchups that can be rough is Death and Taxes, especially when they have main board uh, or, or game one when they drop a Sword of Fire Nice. You just cannot you cannot handle that, right? So, I have an Abraid main. I've got a Null Rod in the sideboard now. So, I've made some tweaks to the list. That's how Delver decks are. They yeah. cannot handle artifact stuff very well yeah absolutely but the in the 75 i have three abrades which is a great great right that's a lot of abrades yeah actually. three abrades yeah. um and then the null rod in the side um so i i think it's uh i think it's well tuned i might make some more changes before the next week but okay that is the main event deck for next week and i'll probably play turbo depths in the a uh, in the pro tour qualifier mm-hmm. uh on friday in new, new york nice. cool man so cool so do you think that Grixis Delver just doesn't have a spot right now in the meta? Um, I think it's okay. I actually did not. Pl- I played a, a bit against Grixis Delver and Grixis Control on Moto, and I don't think I ever lost a match. Like I think the blue red deck is just leaner. Yeah. And it's more disruptive. Yeah. Because a lot of times I'll just fetch out my basics and then I'll wasteland all their stuff, and you can Blood Moon and Price of Progress, but you never get into a, a situation where you can't cast your spells. So I think it's just a more efficient deck right now right grixis delver has a greater quality of card uh of cards in general yeah the third color adds quite yeah absolutely um but blue red delver could just win before they kind of get going so i I, i'm really digging it so there's certain people named tash that say that it is a mindless deck what do you what would you say with your my literally with your mind do i just do i just go to the mindless deck to mindless deck (laughs) So, yeah, I guess apparently yeah, you yeah, do. Guess. Yeah, um, that's what Tash thinks. No, uh, definitely. I don't think it's a mindless <laughs> deck. Um, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of things that you need to consider. I mean, even your, your turn row on opening hand, right? Because you can't answer all problems. Yeah. So, uh, in the blind, you have to evaluate whether, you know, the hand's going to be good. Um, I mean, some of the best hands are t- t- turn one island delver with days backup. But it, it's tough to kind of determine what hands are going to be good. And then you're can tripping a lot. Um, you have a lot of burn. So like, what am I, you know, there are a lot of dead cards for certain matchups, right? Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of decisions you have to make in that aspect as well as sideboarding. Um, and then the Delvers never flip. So it's hard to get damage in when you're chipping in for one often. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most difficult deck, but there are... Have you tried brainstorming? Oh, I have. And pondering? I have. To flip um, your Delvers? No, nah, it's just... I don't know. Have you heard about. of Ponder? What? Pon- yeah, it's uh, one blue... And flips Delver. Yeah, now I get that. But no, there's a lot of times where like I won't have the hand, the you know uh, cantrips, and they just stay on the ground for forever. But uh, yeah, welcome to playing Delver. All right. Um, but no, I don't think it's a mindless deck. Uh, Tash, uh, Galaxy Brain, or whatever he is, um, mm-hmm. probably is good at playing complex decks. But no, I think the deck is. Uh, I would say it's a five out of ten 
maybe in terms of complexity. It's not easy. It's not hard. It's kind of in the middle. Um, but you will gain percentage points from just getting reps in because you'll understand certain interactions and lines and that's, be able to evaluate which creatures you want to drop at when, right? That's exactly how I felt when I played Grixis Delver. And I think I think it plays a little bit differently than... It plays closer to Grixis Delver than it does to Rug Delver, especially with the new versions with Young Pyromancer. So, like, you have... Sometimes you just hold up a young pyromancer for like a just like a late game bomb and go wide. Sure, yeah. You know, and the terramander adds a completely it's another different. Threat. Yeah, huh? it adds a completely different attack angle that Grixis Delver doesn't have the opportunity of doing. And the fact that it's always flying, it's flying off the bat is good. Yep. Um, but like, like so, like in the mirrors and certain strategies, like a lot of times you just drop threats and let them kill your guys and don't fight over it because you have, I mean, a decent amount of threats, but. One thing that I found is I'm not fighting. I'm leaving my counter magic for what they're trying to do. And then I'm just dropping threats. And if they can deal with it, fine. I don't care if they counter. I don't care if they kill it. I'm going to kind of keep sculpting my hand until yeah. they're down. They're low on hand count. And then I can stick a threat that stays. And usually it's a true name towards the end. Or it's a, a young pyromancer that I can kind of disrupt them and then get counters and then win. So yeah, there's weird strategies and nuances to Normally that, what I would so. do when I was playing Delver in the Mirror is I would just go super aggressive. Like yeah. I would... Like, I mean, it, it depends if you're on the player draw, but like, I would try to just mold to like that Delver days force pitch yeah. brainstorm spell pierce back up and just hope that I just make it through their bolts and win the race. Yeah. And another thing that's weird about this deck, at least in my experience, like I board out force of will a lot yes. in some of the other tempo matchups because yes. like it's just such a setback when you have to two for one yourself to yep. counter something. So I'll bring out my forces, uh, which seems strange because it's such a powerful card. Um, but you bring in power blasts, you power blast, red blast usually. But um, yeah, it, it, it's an interesting. Deck. It's very fun if you've never played it and you have the cards. I mean, I think two Vox is the most expensive. Um, it's very fun. What are Terramanders running now? They're like Put a dollar. Put it's like with a hard T. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. All right. Pateramanders. So like they're like a dollar. Yeah. I got some Japanese ones the other day for like a dollar fifty. So. Okay. Because I know when they came out, they were a little, they were a little they spiked at the beginning. I know right? foils are expensive. Okay. Mm but they're not that bad. I would want foils. It's a yeah, foils are lame, but no, it's it's a fun deck and everyone should try it out at least once if you have the cards. Did you just say foils are lame? I mean, I foil my commander deck. That's it. Commander is lame. Well, foils that are lame would go hand in hand with commander which is lame. That is really offensive <laughs> to a lot of people. But I play commander. I don't play commander. So if I if I am a commander player, it can't, it's not offensive coming from me. From you it would be. Maybe. David plays Commander, so he could say it's lame, too. Yeah, it's pretty lame. And I think he has, like, a foil zombie <laughs> Commander deck. No, it's all proxy. All 100 cards. <laughs> I got rid of the zombies a while ago. Ah, oh, lame. Yeah. They weren't doing what I wanted to do. I don't know how to attack with creatures. Yeah, it's too much. too complicated. Like, if you can skip part of the game and still win, why Even not? Even better. Yeah. All Sweet. the creature stuff. Just get it out of the way. Just go from not winning to one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why why is, do all that fluff in the middle? That's wasted time. Yeah. It's like small talk or foreplay. You don't need it. No, no, no. I'm not there for the magic. You I'm there spit for on the your gathering. Hand a little bit and then play storm. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I've been actually like just really enjoying combo right now. I've been really enjoying playing uh, slow depths. I like I like that deck a lot. It has a lot of resilience and. It just can it, it just can hate on a lot of things. I mean, the hand disruption is huge. Like that's what makes the deck. If it didn't have hand disruption, it'd be a horrible deck. Yeah. And it feels so powerful to just be like turn one thoughts, he's turn two him, turn three, three thoughts, or even like <laughs> turn two thoughts, he's and him. Like there just has some nutty hands where you just take all their stuff. Yeah. And then you're just like, sorry, you're fucked. I'm gonna maybe make the combo by just naturally drawing it now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Feels good. David, uh, you playing anything new or is it the same old? Uh, I actually, this last Wednesday at ADG, I went ahead and played Rug Delver. Ooh. That was a fun uh, fun time. I went 1 2, so okay. not the best. Uh, I played against Tash and he was on a, Is It Delver? And I had a. With oh, a mindless deck? Yeah, oh. he was giving it a try. I had Was he really? Yeah, he was. Dude, at the PT, he was talking so much shit. <laughs> Fuck Tash. But 
Yeah, so I had a moment that I... I had two creatures on the board. I was definitely ahead. And in my hand, I had two lands, and that's it. Uh, three lands on the battlefield. And instead that's like, of... That's like four too many lands total. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So I was thinking of saving the lands for a brainstorm and maybe get out of it. Yeah, get free cards. Yeah, but the correct play would have been to play a land and play a land next turn. Because that next turn, I drew Force of Will, which Ooh. I didn't have a blue card to pitch. And he managed to sweep all my creatures, and then he took control of the game. How do you sweep all your creatures with blue-red, Delver? He had a Pateramander out, and he couldn't <laughs> adapt it. So uh, he just kept like cantripping, 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 and then eventually got it to adapt. And just the Pateramander crushed my two Delvers. Uh, and yeah, it'll do that. Yeah, it will. do that? <laughs> it will. Wow. Yeah. All right. And I think you're playing something new tonight at F- FNM? Yeah, I'm going to give uh, Eldrazi a spin. Uh, have you ever played Eldrazi? I have not. I think you'll like it. It's very fun. So I- if Blue Red Delver is like a 5 out of 10 in difficulty, Eldrazi's like a 1 out of 10. 2. 2? Maybe 2, two, two really? or 3. Two? Oh, because you do have to mulligan till you find an Eldrazi. Yeah, no, I mean, you need different. the Soul Lands. Like, soul Land, Eldrazi, go. That's it. The deck is pretty easy to play yeah and then you just hope that you don't draw lands off the top yeah it's just so aggressive it's insane like how fast it is yeah, yeah. that and like the the dragon stompy stuff yeah chalice on one is backbreaking too Ugh. yeah those decks yeah. are just like super aggro in your face it eldrazi wrecks me often when i'm playing ant so i want to try sitting on the other side of the table get inside that player's yeah. mind wreck some ant players exactly <laughs> Exactly. I'm coming for you, Rokini. Ooh. I think you'll be there tonight. Perfect. Sweet. All right. Well, I think I'd, I'm going to put Sneak and Show back together, I decided. So nice. there's not a lot besides like Sneak and Show. And I'm just like really feeling the combo right now. Like I don't want to spend all the mental energy to play Control, <coughs> like play Stone Blade or, or Miracles. The blue red delver does seem appealing too. The blue yeah. red delver does seem like it would be a lot of fun. I don't have the cards for that, but I've been a delver player since you know forever. But I'm really just wanting to just like either, you know, win or not. Yeah. I just want a fast combo deck. Yeah. So I can you know screw around between rounds. Hell yeah! You're yeah. there for the gathering. We're we'll, we'll, there for the gathering. Well, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We'll get some games in before Niagara, and I'll, you can borrow my deck. I'm pretty sure you do have all the cards for it. Maybe not Terramanders and I for Blue Red Delver. Yeah, you have Volks. Yeah, I got everything. So you have everything. Yeah. You said everything. you didn't have the cards, but you do. Well, I don't have the Terramanders. Uh, I'll give you my English ones. Excuse me. I upgraded. Terramanders. I upgraded mine, so you can have my English ones. Oh well, thank you. That's very you're, generous. You're I owe you what? Two dollars. Two dollars. All right. Cool. Sweet. All right. Well, so what other... Let's move into the news and talk about some of the cards and spoilers that have been going on. Ooh, I okay. want to talk about a card. What card do you want to talk about? I want to talk about the new Sahiri? Sahili. Sahili. Sahili Sublime Sahili. Artificer. So she's a three drop. Are you, you going to pull her up? Yeah. All right. Um, so while you're pulling her up, I'll read it to the v- listeners. Uh, so she's two... Red blue hybrid mana, so you can either play two red or two blue or one red, one blue, uh, and one colorless. Uh, she comes in with five loyalty. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, create a one one colorless servo artifact creature token. She has a negative two. The target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control until end of turn, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So that's only a negative two. She doesn't have any other abilities. Besides her passive ability of making the one ones, so what do you think about this, David? It looks like a card. Yeah, um, the one ones are pretty cool. I guess I'm not exactly sure what shell you would put this in. I was mm-hmm. thinking like a rug control, like I was playing, or like okay, maybe um, what is it, Tesserator? I uh, I didn't notice the order creature you control so you can copy creatures as well yeah okay so yeah you stick a decent threat and copy a true name or something and get get in 
Okay, yeah. I could see it. I yeah. definitely see her. She's got to be a one of, right? Like you wouldn't want more than one of her. Probably not. No, but maybe like copy your young pyromancer. Copy mm-hmm. young pyromancer. Ooh, make a bunch of tokens yeah. and thopters. Oh. Yeah, Each. or you could, you know, start copying your true names. Yeah, you know, later yeah. in the game too. I mean, the huge deal with her to me is that she's out of bolt range by default. Yes. So yeah. you just kind of drop her and forget her, and then she starts adding a bunch of value, and you can nag her when you want. Um, the only bad part is she doesn't have a plus. Correct. So she's not she's not going up anywhere. Yeah. Which, so Which kind of sucks. So in the set that she's in, though, there's a lot of proliferate abilities that will take up Planeswalkers, so it will add to their loyalty. But yeah, in Legacy, you're going to get two shots out of her maybe, and that's it. Well, yeah. remember that... Um, what was it? it? Was a Death Shadow deck that had proliferate to oh, work around death. Chalice on one, but you have to sacrifice what? it. Yeah, you proliferate your opponent's Chalice, so now it's a Chalice on two, and oh, all your one drops are unlocked. Blue black doesn't have anything to deal with the artifacts. Nothing. Oh, so they use Throne of Geth, which is an artifact that you tap it, sacrifice it, yeah, and you proliferate. Yeah, interesting. So then it's Chalice on two. And yeah. it could shut out some of their stuff. Like Young Pyromancer is another or I, I don't know hmm. what yeah, like But yeah, any chalice deck most chalice decks have two drops. Yeah, because so they, they skip the one drop. Yeah. So yeah. That's interesting. I didn't right? know that. That's yeah. pretty sweet. What do you think about uh the blue red or sorry, the blue black death shadow deck? Do you think it's kind of falling out of favor now that the fact now that uh, like blue red delvers come in more into like I that aggro so. spot? Yeah, the deck has so much burn that I don't think Death Shadow is very well positioned. Because I, I remember one of the last Legacy GPs we played at, I think I played two or three Death Shadow decks. Um, but now I think, you know, it's probably not that well positioned with Blue Red Delver kind of rising through the ranks because it has anywhere from two to three Chain Lightnings and four Lightning Bolts. as Fork Bolt has cheap threats that are evasive, like the Flyers and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think it's probably a little bit on the It's the better decline. aggro deck. You I land so. a young peasy and you can block that death shadow yeah, with you just tokens. Block it for days. For days, yeah. Yeah. Go wide and then eventually kill them. But yeah, yeah. Bo- both of those decks are very susceptible to chalice on one and stuff That's like true. that. So. That's why you have the three at braids in the seventy five. Yeah, boy. Yeah. So, all right. So next card that was printed. So you got I it lined kinda, up there. Yeah, I got a little lineup. Well, since we started with the planeswalker, we'll do the other two planeswalkers. Okay. Uh, this is the one that I think is going to be the most impactful in Legacy is Teferi the uh, Teferi Time Raveler. Again, for the listeners, he's a three drop planeswalker, which is always good. Uh, can be potentially be very good. Uh, one blue, one white, one colorless. His static ability is each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery. Oh, yeah, and he has four loyalty. His plus one, until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. It's pretty sweet. Insane, yeah. Turn, ponder on your turn. Uh, Let me his, supreme verdict on your turn. Right? Oh. Yeah. And then his minus three, which I don't think is that great, is return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand, then draw a card. But the static ability and the plus ability alone paired with a three drop planeswalker i think is definitely warrants playability for this guy oh yeah well the fact okay so i don't know if it goes main board in anything because it's it, the fact that i mean it's it's passive ability looks per- like it's i mean it's really kind of situational right like it depends on the deck that you're playing there's a lot of decks that it just won't matter at all that they can't cast spells only at sorcery speed but then for storm again, or some other combo decks it could be a huge imagine playing this though and you can drop your mentor and not worry about it getting countered now they have to have removal which they probably have less of and they than have to counter cast it on spells. their turn or your stone forge or something like exactly one of your win cons yeah i could see that yeah, yeah so once he drops anything you cast that turn or while he's in play like your spells are never gonna get countered they can't yeah I'm not sure I like the design of the card, though. Why? What about it don't you so like? So it just kind of makes its 
non-interactive. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's like, I mean, blue... And blue-white doesn't need more of that. <laughs> well, no, blue-white is all about interaction, but like, right? It's counter spells, it's removal stuff, it's like... It makes you the only person that can interact. Yeah, it's, it's like true. the counterbalance stuff. It it's similar to that, where it's yeah. like, yeah, you can't interact with me, really, because I'm going to counter it, or you can't even cast spells now, or I'm going to counterbalance lock you, so... Yeah. I don't... So I, I kind of don't like that part of it, and I also don't like the neg three on it. Yeah, the neg three is if probably was, never going to be used. No, if it, I mean, it, as maybe like an oh shit moment. Exactly, you, you could return like bounce a, a chalice. Yeah, bounce a chalice, bounce a whatever. But the fact that it's neg three and he starts on four, that's a lot for a neg ability. Yeah, uh, you, you said know? it. It's like an oh shit. You know, yeah, like, it's like an oh shit bun. This is the answer. Yeah, um, I think I, he's really good though. I I do like. I do like his plus though. Yeah. I do like his plus because it gives you more flexibility in your hand for yeah. sure. No, I think I think he's good. I think he'll see play in like Miracles and Stone Play decks. Maybe. His neck three could almost be considered a council's judgment, giving you a second chance to counter it on the way down again. True. So I could see like a one one split. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like one one between like, uh, like if you were running or... two uh, two councils, because I see a lot of decks running so two this in councils. Place of a council. Where they yeah. do one in one in the main, one in the side. Yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah. sometimes double white is tough for some for like true, true. But yeah. yeah. I, I think he'll see play. Definitely. But it doesn't hit stuff that you have to target it. And council's judgment hits stuff that you can't target, like true names. Uh, true, true. Also, Council's split. judgment hits planeswalkers. Okay. And that hits everything but Sure. You do get to draw a card. But oh, yeah. You do get to draw a card. Which Miracles, they love doing that. They love they drawing do. the cards. Like this new AK Miracles is so good. Dude, you could just bounce your own Snapcasters with this guy you could, too. You could do that with Jace too. Yeah, you're right. And that's a plus. Or that's a minus one. So it's a yeah, minus yeah, one. Yeah. Well, I this comes out the turn before Jace. I don't know. So. It, it, I like the design on this card a lot. I think, I'm not a modern player, but I would guess that this would see modern play. Yeah. Well, and, okay, look at this. Like, so you turn and standard too. Like, it's oh, yeah. it's going to make a dope Azor go into like a dope Azorius with this guy standard in, deck. Yeah, yeah, with this guy in Hero of Dominaria in the same format. Yeah, stupid. But look at on curve, you drop this on turn three, he resolves. Turn four, your Jace is uncounterable. It's true. Yeah. Whew. Or he ate up the counter spell for the Jace. Yeah, that too. So either way, it's good. Yeah. All right. All right, the next card, the last planeswalker that I I think right like is playable. I know David hasn't been following the the, the spoilers too much. These are new cards to me. I, I like to. It's gonna be Karn the Great Creator. So this Karn is a four drop planeswalker, four colorless, obviously, uh, five loyalty, and his static ability is a one sided Stony Silence. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. So if you find a way to turn all, turn like Mycosynth Lattice where you make everything artifacts, your opponent can't tap their lands for mana. Um, his plus one, until your next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its CMC. His minus two, you may choose an artifact card you own from outside the game or in exile, reveal that card, and put it into your hand. I mean, that's just errata to being sideboard, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what... It's a wish. It's like a wish ability. Yeah. So yeah, you can grab an artifact out of your sideboard or one that's been exiled and put it in your hand. Which I don't think Colorless has ever had the ability for like a wish no, effect. No, that's... Mm. I could see that as like a four of in Mud, if Mud was... Oh yeah, and like, then you oh, just have is, like a wish board. There's no... That, that actually might make it so Mud is a little bit more playable now. That's a huge deal for them. Also, I think... Um, uh, actually... I was going to say maybe Stompy, like the Eight Moon Stompy would play it, but I I think the other Karn is actually better in that shell, or for a four drop, maybe the Chandra Torch of Defiance. Yeah, but he, I mean, it, it does kind of modify some of the decks, right? Like you could have a bridge in your sideboard. You could have some of your artifact hate in the sideboard so that once you drop this guy, whatever yeah. piece you need, you tutor up. So you run four of these, you try to lock him out, drop in like in the first couple turns with Mud, try to lock him out, drop this guy as soon as possible either go grab an answer or now just start beating him with your trinosphere exactly for yeah. a three three yeah well not with your trinosphere because when it's tapped it doesn't trinosphere 
Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's weird that the storm player knows that. <laughs> that's, Have you ever that's tapped a Tritosphere? Thing, yeah. Have you ever tapped a Tritosphere? Back in the day, I I guess Tangle Wire taps. I guess yeah. If you were yeah. running Tangle Wire, you'd have to be careful. Yeah, not um, to tap your Tritosphere against the storm player. <laughs> yeah, but I think this guy compliments the uh, other Karn, the sign of Urza, really well. Yeah. Yeah, that that might be. I don't know if it's enough to bring mud back, but that's a good printing for mud for sure. And yeah. the fact that it starts off outside of bolt range again, very good. I like any planeswalkers that start at like four or, yeah. or higher. Karn's mm-hmm. always had a big ass, so yeah. No, he he he, big he looks boy. in shape in this one. Yeah, though. he's been working out. What does the other Karn look like? Uh, he's got like a little loincloth and yeah, he's, he's a little he, weird. Yeah, he's all fancy. So, like robots wow. don't wear clothes. Come on. He's not a robot. He's, he's like a artifact. construct. He's a construct. He's not yeah, an a artifact. A robot is not does a it, construct. Where does he say artifact on there? He, he, well, look at him. Silver Golem. He's a construct look or something. At, that motherfucker old, dude. He is old. He Look at him. He just... He's an artifact. Yeah, he's not a robot. I don't know. I, don't know. I do like the art on that card a lot, though. Like, <coughs> like like how he's just kind of warping the other stuff around him. Yeah. You know? The card's dope. Ooh, is that like... What is that in the background up in the do top Do we have left? any mud players anymore? Jake like, Walkler Jake played it at uh, PGL. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah, you did. Oh, shout out to Jake. There you go, dude. Oh, yeah. Yep, he's boy. still playing that, so uh-huh. I bet he's getting all wet and He'll hot probably, and bothered yeah. and over this He's probably brewing with the, this guy. Yeah. All right. Next up. All right, another planeswalkers. planeswalker that I actually saw. Really? Yeah. Oh, David. I saw one spoiler. Uh, the new Jace. Um... He's a four drop for triple blue and one. Um, what is his name? I have no idea. Here, I'll grab it real quick. Uh, Jace, wielder of mysteries. Not cutting cast away because that guy's trash. Jace, wielder of mysteries. So, yeah, um, his mana cost, triple blue, one colorless. What his static ability is is if you would draw a card and your library has no cards in it you win the game instead so what is that like so in my of eyes of course this is the card that you paid attention <laughs> of to of course as a recovering doomsday player <laughs> this could open up a different shell for doomsday um I see it. You the itch. It is. It really it is. Oh my god! Three blue in a deck that also runs a three black card. <laughs> yeah, you run dark ritual, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you run. You run <laughs> web ritual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I see this replacing Labman because Labman he dies to a lot of things, and you need to run bad cards like Chromatic Sphere or Conjurer's Bobble. This guy doesn't get bolted or swords, and no abrupt decay. And if you drop the Teferi the turn before, he can't be countered. There we go. Triple so, color. Yeah. There you go. So silence is back in. Oh, silence. Man. Actually, that sounds not bad. Right? And As th- per dooms- uh, Doomsday? Yeah. Then on top of it, one of the bad things with Doomsday is it's an, an, it's a card disadvantage. So after you play Doomsday, you need a way to draw into your pile, which this Jace does both. Um, plus one target player puts two cards of their library into their graveyard and draw a card. So you can do it to yourself and have some kind of uh, reanimate or um, set up for a past in flames of some sort if you wanted to. But I mainly see it as... Okay, so you, you get the Jace out and you plus him. Draw a card. So you have to cast Doomsday. You put the Jace in your hand. You need... No, no, no. I, I'm seeing the deck as a no Demir control deck with Doomsday Finish. So Force of Will, Thought Seize, maybe so a counter spell. out first and then cast Doomsday? Yes. It'll be a slower deck. It'll try... I don't know. It'll be slow. It's not going to be combo brain, anymore. Dude. But then his plus ability is like... Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> or his minus Wait. ability. Yeah. Yeah, the minus ability, if that works out ever... So that he starts off at four loyalty. You got to plus him four times. And then on the fifth time, you can negative eight him, draw seven cards. Then if there's if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. Yes. It's an interesting design for a Jace. Very, very. But like, I'm brewing again. So I'm pretty like excited it. about this card. I'm excited to see what you bring to the table. Oh, yeah. Blue, black, uh, stasis, no <sighs> creatures. Of course not. Um Lots of like sacrifice, yeah, stuff. Just hard demir control. Do you yes. play Go like to time and only play one game? Uh, well, you just yeah. have to win more than your opponent. Yeah. Well, you hey, win game one during the shuffle. Clock runs out. 
Would exactly. You, yeah. Would you play Glimsy Unthinkable in this deck? Yeah, I think you have to, do. You mill yourself so fast. Mill 14 cards. Isn't it just 10? I think it is 10. It's um, 10. It's still a lot. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you could do that. You is could target also... target opponent or target player? Target player. Okay, cool. You can run Thought Lash, which is uh, two blue, two colorless. And on your upkeep, you can pay zero and mill a card. And Dope. you just r- do that constantly and mill your whole deck. It has some... What about like Tunnel Vision? Can't you use... Oh my God, this was Jason the Mind Sculptor. What about... You fate seal yourself, you put a card on the bottom, and then you cast Thought uh, Tunnel Vision... Getting all of that card and then use this guy to draw a card. And then that win. could be fun. Or, or what is, um, oh, never mind. That's a bad idea. Okay. So the new Jace looks pretty cool, though. New Jace, I don't think it's going to see really much legacy play unless you, I'm going to make it, <laughs> unless you force it into some shit. <laughs> it's going to happen. Uh, I can't, dude, I was going to say something, can't remember what it is. So we're going to move on to the next card. So I think, and the next one is probably one of the most hyped cards because it was one of the most, bro- the, one of the first broken cards to be revealed. And I think this is David's wheelhouse here. Uh, Bolus's Citadel. So this is a six drop, three black, three colorless, legendary artifact. Um, you can look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast this, if you cast the spell this way, pay life equal to its CMC rather than paying the mana cost. And then you can tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. Is it like bolus, like bolus? Yeah, B-O-L-A-S, comma, or apostrophe S, sit it all. There you are, top one. I... <laughs> I wish this is legacy playable. I'd love to see some brews, but I see it in vintage, giving yourself a tinker target that pretty much allows you to play the rest of your deck. Because you win from the you like once you resolve it, you win, right? Yeah, I, in a vintage sell, shell, definitely. You don't think legacy though? You don't think it's legacy playable? I don't think I don't so. Know. No, I don't think so. It, dude, just the the cost that it, the, just the fact that it costs five. It's three generic and three black. That's that's oh, that's six. Uh, so the fact that it costs <laughs> six, I didn't see all three of the. Okay, but yeah, I don't. I that's that's a lot. It is. And if you're gonna get to that much mana, why not? Why not just storm Kill off? them? Because yeah. like ad nauseum is just a better spell, right? Ad nauseum costs one less, and it's instant speed. The mm-hmm. amount of times I duress my opponent, see they have nothing, on your upkeep, I cast a nauseum, draw 20 cards, do whatever you want, I have 20 cards. Okay. So you think fringe playable at best? Yeah. Definitely in vintage, but... Yeah, Tinker Target sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Why... Right. Okay. Yeah. Why wait for Summoning Sickness on Blightsteel when right. you can just kill just them in win. the same turn? Yeah. I- I'm excited to see this in Vintage. Yeah. This would be cool. Definitely. Not Legacy playable, though, you don't think? No, I don't think so. I think that boar is, though. The boar. Do you want to move on to the boar? Let's move on to that boar. All right, so I think Ooh. that's... Yeah, that. we, we have a spell that we want to talk about. I think the rest are creatures. So we have... Yeah, good luck spelling this. It's Ilharg the Raised Boar. I think it's I-L-H-A-R-G. While uh, Zach is typing that out, <laughs> have you seen that creature that's just like... <laughs> oh, f- Fibbolt or whatever? Flib- <laughs> yeah. The lost but... Lo- the totally lost guy? Yeah. I like his name. The blue elvish visionary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now he's cool. I'm sure there will be some weird breeze with him. All right. So the boar, the raised boar, he's three colorless, two red, legendary creature. He's a boar god. He's a 6-6 six, six creature with trample. And whenever he attacks... You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. When the raise, when so when this guy dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put him into its owner's library, third from the top. It's not bad. So if he gets swords before you can finish the game with him, then you get a couple more turns. You can draw him again. He's very resi- th- yeah. He's always coming back. So I think like this is going to be a really. I don't think mono red sneak or I think mono red sneak attack is the only place where this boar is going to go. I don't think it goes in like sneak and show or stompy, uh, stompy or anything like that. Because I mean, if if you have if you have one red and you're playing sneak and show, 
you're going to sneak this out with. Yeah. You're, I'm sorry. You're going to sneak Ember Cool out or something else in your hand or Grizzle Brand, right? But you sneak this out and then that has haste because you sneaked it out. So then you attack with him putting in your Ember Cool. Yeah, but it already wins you the game if you get the Ember Cool out already is what I'm saying. That's overkill, right? Most of the time, yeah. 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 Maybe there's like a couple situations. I can't really think of anything where... I mean, I guess maybe if... Uh, you're at like you're playing burn or something. They're like about to kill you on the stack. Like, and but then then you lose anyways if you have yeah, this guy yeah, or not. Yeah. So I think I don't think it goes in um, show and tell or sneak and show. But I think mono red sneak attack as another threat would be pretty good. So I know a lot of the mono red sneak attacks run Godo and Batter Skull for a little bit more resilience against uh, you know some of the swords decks and stuff like that. Um, I think this guy kind of would take the place of that. And Trample's a thing. And then if you play the new Teferi beforehand... <laughs> you can't counter him. Then you can't counter him. Wow. Profound. Profound. That's the neb of the uh, the deck that I'm going to build yeah. with both of those guys. It will be Just Guy Profound, Boars, and Gods with Boar, Teferi. Uh, Just Guy, yeah, Boar God. Just Guy, Boar God. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, but um, I think this guy is cool. I think I don't know if it adds a whole lot to Mono Red Sneak Attack, yeah. but he is sweet. Uh, he is sweet, and he I is think really sweet. Um, and you can turn one what, Seething Song him right, exactly. and then turn two, you win. Exactly. If you have another like, <laughs> if you have like an Emrakul or yeah, a Grizzle Brand, another Beater yeah. or World Spine Worm. Oh yeah. God! So yeah, Wait. he's pretty cool. Oh, so if it was World Spine Worm, it goes back to your hand. It doesn't die. So. But you're doing fifty. You're doing twenty-one trample That's damage true. on turn two. So it's true. You probably don't care. Like you're probably gonna just win. You don't get the worms, though. I'm just saying. You don't get worms. Yeah, which is I think is a plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worms like, are yeah, bad for you. Yeah, yeah. Back, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, cool. So we have two more cards. Or actually, three more. Um, so we'll talk about the one that I kind of hate the most. Uh, Tomic Distinguished Advocist. Ah, um, uh, yes. So this guy is obviously... Uh, he'll probably be seen in uh, TOMIK. There you go. go you got it. Go down. Perfect. Yeah, you you'll, yeah, you'll, you would never like intuitively figure out how to spell this guy because it doesn't make sense. Um, so he's two white. He's a 2-3 flyer. Legendary human advisor. So Cavern brings this guy in easy. Uh, lands on the battlefield and land cards in graveyards cannot be the target of spells or abilities your opponent control. Your opponents can't play land cards from graveyards. So it's good against lands. It's good against turbo depths. Um, it's good against wasteland. Any utility land your opponent has, they can't activate. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't you can't target dark depths with anything. Correct. That sucks. Yeah. For the dark I, depths. So player. yeah, you cannot yeah. use Thespian stage to make dark depths. You can't use sacrifice. Hexmage. Yeah. One plus, you can't recruit her for the guard, this dude. Because uh-huh. he's a 2 3. Yeah. So they kind of kept that in mind. Um, yeah, that would just be insane. Yeah, that would be. But the fact game. that he's 2 3 makes it great for two. Like, he's just yeah, got a big body on him. Do you yeah, think and this he's is. And Why he's is he flying? flying? Dude, this is a great DNT card. He's he, probably a replacement for Sarah Avenger. Yeah. I agree. Actually, I mean, this could go into the sideboard for Miracles, too, for, like, the Lands matchup, or even maybe the Dark Depths matchup, But Miracles, Miracles does not need any more help against Dark Depths. <laughs> That's true, but maybe with the Lands matchup, they would. Sure. So, I, you know, that that's a huge deal. That's yeah. a huge deal. That That is probably, out of all the cards that we've talked about today, I think this is going to have the most impact. Yeah. Just because it costs two, which is perfect for legacy, it goes into a, a budget. Well, a it's budget a budget deck. deck. It's a budget D&T. deck. I mean, it's a powerful deck, but it is a budget deck. There are no reserve list cards in that deck. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if every DNT deck just main boards this. All right. So, just hot take. It's a, no, I mean, it's just a flyer for two, and it protects all of your lands, and it's good against. You know any type of loam strategy, so especially with, you know the uh, the dominant uh, four color loam here in Arizona, yeah, it's going to be good against that. 
Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, and I think it's probably good in the mirror. Because yeah, they can't port you down. Can't port you. And, and can't wasteland you can't shit, Yeah. Uh, hot take though. What about Turbo Dups just playing this to protect themselves? Oh shit! Junk Dups. Yeah, Junk Dups, right? But then you can't target your Dark Dups. You can. You can. Your opponents can. Lands on the battlefield and land cards and graveyards can't be the target. Oh, of spells or abilities your opponents control. Yeah, so boy. it protects your dark depths combo. So we play that Riftstone portal, we crop rotate it into the graveyard, there and then we, we have go. all lands produce white, and then we cast this bad boy. There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's that's how crop rotate works. You just Yeah. You know. And then we protect him with safekeeper until we get our comp. Exactly. Easy. Thank you, Wizards, for the for for new dark depths tech. <laughs> Mox Appreciate Diamond it. helps here. Yeah, Mox Diamond talks for one. Yeah, oh, you yeah. have to have two Mox Diamonds though. Well, you play your Mox Diamond throwing oh, the Riftstone Portal, portal in yeah. the graveyard. And then play Dark Depths. And you, you got this. Dude. There you go, man. Yeah. There you go. Game. Esper. No, not no, Esper. J- junk. 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 Or Abzan, I guess. It's going to be Junk. junk fuck but like, Abzan, dude. Junk. <laughs> fuck it's fucking Junk. It? Yeah, Junk. Fuck Golgari. Junk. Who wants to no, say Golgari's Golgari. Yeah. It's a horrible word. No yeah. one should say it ever. I, I hate like all it. that stuff. I hate all the new... Like guild names and stuff. Like, right. why can't you just whatever? Um, thanks, yeah. Channel Fireball. Yeah, no, this guy's good though. I like this guy. I think he'll see play. Yeah, he's probably the best card out of that set. Yeah, uh, I would say the best card. He's one he's for legacy. A, oh, for legacy, he's up there. Uh, but it's only like one deck that plays him. I think Teferi's going to be really good in legacy, and then I also think uh, our next card is going to be very very good. All right, uh, what do you got? God hyphen eternal Kefnet. And I say the hyphen so that Zach can find it. Uh, so God eternal Kefnet. So those of you following the lore, Nicol Bolas killed all the gods on Amonkhet or whatever, and he brought them back as eternals, and now he brought them to Ravnica to help fight all the planeswalkers. So we got all these zombie gods running around. Uh, God eternal Kefnet is... That's the third one. Third one. Yeah, blue. right there. Blue guy. So two blue, two colorless, four five flyer... You may re- so you may reveal the first card you draw each turn as you draw it. Whenever you reveal an instant or sorcery card this way, copy that card, and you may cast the copy. The copy costs two colorless less to cast. And then when he dies, just like the boar dies or exiled, third from the top of your library. Um, and I think that's a may, so you could put him in the graveyard. Yeah, um, it is a may. I think it's cool. I don't think it's legacy playable. I think it's insane, dude. You think like it's insane. You he think copies it's legacy the playable? spell. Yeah. yeah, he copies the spell. I think it's cool. I think it's a great commander card. You're using your commander brain right now, buddy. No, uh, miracles I, is a deck. Four, they miracles play is a, a deck. Con. If you're playing, if you're casting something for four mana, he's a flying four five. He is a beater. Yeah, but he they just, play bane slayer in miracles. He's a five drop. She's a five drop, and this guy no, is he's a four drop. Bane slayer is five, isn't she? I think so. Yeah, bane slayer is five, but this guy. So he's four. a four drop. So he's easier, lower on the curve. Yeah. But, but Bane Slayer is because of lifelink. Yeah, here, but and Bane the, Slayer will end the game. So will this guy. And this guy pairs well with Predict. I can reveal the card, make a copy of it, predict it away, draw two cards, and still have that copy to cast. But it's as you draw. So you can't... You re- may reveal the first card you draw each turn. So I can reveal it. But uh, it, yeah, 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 then yeah, it's yeah. already in your hand. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But so, like, let's say it's a brainstorm. I can keep a brainstorm in hand and pay one blue to brainstorm. Yeah, that that does. I can reveal a ponder. It, also, it goes well with AK because you could. Oh like, my god! Yeah, you have AK in the graveyard. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, and then you cast another oh, AK. Oh, and, and it's one cast blue. Another AK. Like you cast the one from your hand first. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can copy that. You can cast do you have to do it at the time you reveal it? It's weird because sorcery you speed. reveal an instant or sorcery card this way, copy that card and you may cast the copy. I think you have to cast it at that time. So you Even with sorcery? It's going to give your sorcery spells flash? I think we have to wait for Oracle on it. Yeah. Maybe. But, but yeah, even with if you could, um, uh, AK is instant. So if you just had to reveal yeah. it and then you cast it with that on the stack, you cast the AK from your hand first. And then, which costs one less? The copy costs the one. The copy less. costs one less, not the one from oh, your okay. hand. So but the, still, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so then you just draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, this guy is. I think I think he'll see some play. Maybe might put him in that Doomsday build that we're. Oh talking my about. god, <laughs> David's gonna have the craziest Doomsday shit. Oh, and if you play to fairy first, 
Oh, then you can cast this guy and he's uncounterable. Dude, it's on curve too. That actually Ooh. makes sense. Teferi turn three, God Eternal Cabinet turn four, Boar turn then, five. And then Supreme win. Verdict. And then and then just put him third from the top. So this guy's yeah. also good with Supreme Verdict. If you have to verdict, you're going to get him back soon. And with Jace on play, you can give him back that turn. Yeah. Or the next turn, right? You yeah. can brainstorm him back into your hand. I could... Maybe see it as a one of. I think we're turning. Mean, maybe one of. Yeah, maybe, maybe one or two. But I, no, I, never two. I would never. I don't think so. Fine. Zach. Maybe one of. Maybe, but I don't think this is going to see miracles play. Uh, we'll see. It, it's tough so. for cards to break into legacy. I agree. It is. It is. I do like him though because it's it's so tight and we have so many cards to select from. I think Jace is a better four drop. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it would take that spot. Sure. I mean, the Miracle Shell is pretty tight. There's only a few flex spots, like three, maybe four. Uh, like it, well, if you're like in the like, Jeskai version, I think it's like three or four. If you're on the blue-white version, I think you have a little bit more wiggle room. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think he's, but he's one of the win cons, so you can cut like an Entreat or a Mentor, but Mentor is just so good. So I, I don't know. I think this guy could also much. pair very well with Mentor. Oh, and then I think someone, I think Dan could, Ford yeah. in our group chat, I think Dan Ford mentioned that this is insane with Phoenix. Or was it? Was no, it wasn't Dan Ford. It was the other. It was the next card that's just a super spicy Timmy card or okay. a Spike card. And which is mm. the next card that we're going to talk about, right? Finale now. of Promise. This is the last card we're going to talk about. I'm sure there's other legacy playables, but we only have so much time in the in the day. Is that the new the red one I showed you? Ooh, Finale so there's of one more card I have on mind. All right, all right, we'll finish up with David's. Um, but Finale of Promise is two red X, and it's a sorcery. You may cast up to one target instant card and or and or up to one target sorcery card from your graveyard, each with converted mana cost X or less without paying their mana cost. If a card cast this way would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. If X is 10 or more, copy, copy each of those spells twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. So like in burn, you can do red, red, red and get, get a bolt into like a chain lightning back. You could. But you're gonna need a lot of mana or if to you're, pull that yeah, off. Just, just three. As you, yeah, I see I, Domenico with three. seven mountains in play all the time and a sad face. Okay, that's just how Domenico looks. That's not nice. Man. Oh, he is resting sad face. <laughs> he is resting sad face. No, okay. No. Um, no, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm I don't. Not, think... I'm not a burn player, so I don't see the world from that really warped, like perspective that burn players have. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about, burn Definitely. players. Yeah, fuck you, burn players. But um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't know if that's good enough for burn. For like a three drop, you kind of want. I, I think you'd want damage. a little bit more. I think. I don't know, man. We'll see. I think it's good because burn runs out of resources quickly, and this is a way to just get those final points in. I, I think six, light up the stage true. is better. Yeah, yeah light well, because it's just more burn. It's more yeah. burn or cards. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's is that cost three as well, right? Or one or, if you yeah. dealt yeah. damage. Yeah. And that then turn. exquisite firecraft is uncounterable and four damage. Sure. Yeah. Uh, for th the same amount of mana. Sure. But if yeah, if you do have if you do draw this and you have six mountains out. But this card with is it Phoenix is stupid. So how does that work? Red, red, red. So like it runs faithless lootings. It runs cantrips. So if you have the phoenixes in your graveyard, you play red, 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 and red or whatever. You can cast a brainstorm and copy it, so that's two spells, and then you can cast like a faithless suit again, copy it, and that's four spells. So that's gonna get you um or I'm I'm so stupid. That's if it's doubling. But no, so this copying the two spells from the graveyard, that's three spells. So yeah. if you have a faithless okay. looting and like a brainstorm, you're gonna get both of those and it's gonna trigger the For Phoenixes. one card, you can cast three spells for four mana. Yeah. For, I, three, yeah. for three mana. For three mana. Because X is one, so that means you can cast a Brainstorm and like a Faithless Looting. And then your Grixis Phoenix comes back. You may cast up to one and Sorcery. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, bro. okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so you yeah. can hit a Faithless Looting and like, or like a Thought Seize yeah. and a Brainstorm or a Bolt and a Brainstorm, you know, and then it triggers your Phoenixes. Yeah. It triggers them hard. Phoenix Eye. Cool. 
Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So what's your card? What's your last card? The what's last card uh, I saw was the new Diabolic Edict. Oh, Liliana's Triumph. Yeah. Yeah, um, that would definitely see it legally. Exactly. Uh, I got to see it by, I was scrolling Reddit and there was a video of some guy. He had like signed Diabolic Edicts that were foil and he like really? takes them out of his deck and just throws them in the trash. Uh, and like, Yeah. So th- is this what a magic player would call a strictly better Diabolic Edict? I, well, let's read it and find out. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a Liliana Planeswalker, each opponent also discards a card. And it's one generic, one black. Instant so, speed as well. And it's instant speed, just like Diabolic Edict. Mm. So, yes. The one difference... Is this is each opponent, whereas Edict is target player. Target player. But I don't know how often that comes into play. I, I think for Legacy not never, targeting yeah. opponent, why yeah, this not even, have the... In Legacy, it would be strictly better, just in case maybe somebody sanctity. has something. Yeah, this is yeah, yeah. Sanctity yeah. or... Plus, it's got Liliana on it. Come on, man. Like, exactly. one, the, like I don't even know what Diabolic Edict Art is. Is it like a, a guy falling out of a boat or a ship yeah, or something? Like a sky ship? Tight. I love that. He's like falling <laughs> out of a... And it's <laughs> yeah. the, the original printing on it is the old foiling process. So yeah. the foil card looks dope. But as you, what did you say about foils again? Uh, they're lame. They're lame. Okay. so De- Delegated to Commander Decks if, only. If you want to go to Espy's house and stab him for saying that, just send an email to Arizona Eternal... <laughs> Magic at gmail.com and I will I will uh I'll give you Espy's address. Gladly. Go there and tell him what you think. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you really shouldn't say that probably on the internet. <laughs> well, saying the foils are lame, come on. No, no, no. Like that I'll give some your address. Oh yeah, well, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so Liliana's Triumph. Yeah, I think that's a good card. Okay, yeah. so out of all the cards we've seen here today, I think this is probably the best. What? But it's the one yes. that's for sure going to be it's in the, Legacy. It's, yes, for sure. It has a spot already. It's golden. Yeah. What do you think? It, so you, okay, like, all right, everything we looked at, you think, what card do you think is the best for Legacy? Okay, the best, I think, is going to be that, um, the Tom Mick guy. Tom Mick. Tom Mick. Tom Mick. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the double white guy, uh, I think he's going to be really good. And then Liliana's, what is it? Tri- Triumph. 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 Tri- Come on. Triumph. Triumph. Yeah, I think I think Liliana's Triumph and the yeah. Atomic guy. David? Well, other than the Jace, of course. Yeah. I'd have to agree with Zach. Those two cards you think those are... those two? Yeah. Are you going to go with Teferi? I think Teferi's good. I think, I think Teferi's, Teferi's really the best good. out of all this stuff. I think he's the most powerful. It like, being a three drop is pretty nice. Yeah. I think Teferi's going to be really good, and then either Tomic or the... Like, this will see a lot of play, right? Yeah. Um, but it's just an edict effect. We've had them forever. Um, but yeah, but like it's not game changing. It's, it's pretty sweet. Oh yeah, when they have Lily. Yeah. 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 But if they, you're a Pox player, they have lilies. If you're a Pox player, yeah. uh, don't yeah. send an yeah. email. Don't <laughs> yeah. talk to us. Don't play magic. Um, <laughs> don't, yeah. Stay at home and burn your Pox deck. But yeah, I agree. I think like uh, what's his name? Uh, Teferi, Tomic, and Liliana are going to be really good. Out of Incarn. the three, yeah. Teferi is your final answer. Uh, Teferi. This is going to go on the internet forever. So Jeez. when you're wrong, I'm going to pull up a clip of this. All right, Borgod. God. Boar God. All right, <laughs> Boar God. It. Final answer? <laughs> final answer, Borgod. All God. right, all right, all right. All right, so we went over some of the cards. We're going to take a little break right now, and then we're going to be back and talk about our most recent Legacy League, and I'm going to bring in the winner. <laughs> oh, did they actually, they, they were able to make it down? Yeah, the, the Legacy Ooh. League winner. Uh is here so we're gonna we're gonna talk to him about that sounds good Welcome back to the O2 Dropcast, where if we don't talk about it, you shouldn't play Burn. You shouldn't that's play Burn. The, that's the new model. I like that. Um, <laughs> dude, there's a lot of Burn here in the Valley lately. Ugh. But we're going to talk about our Legacy League that we just completed here. 
Um, before we talk Ooh. about the, and we talk to our winner of the Legacy League, we're going to talk a little bit about maybe an upcoming Legacy League that should be firing here soon. If you yep. want to sign up for that, that's going to be on Arizona Eternal Magic. Dot, no, is this just AZ. Magic. We have, we have both. We have both. We do have that domain too. I bought both of them. Does it redirect? So they both, yeah. Duh, dope, dude. Dope. Ten years ago, Daddy, I know how to do. Hell I yeah. a domain name. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be firing up, and uh, you can sign up for that. And hopefully, we have a pretty good turnout for that. The new format for that, if you're listening and you haven't played in the last one, we're doing six rounds. So we're down from eight to six. Cut to top eight. 25 entry bingo bango deck change after week three deck yeah. change after only one deck change instead of two now correct so you have your original list one deck change that's what you take into the top eight so you cannot switch when you get into the top eight brian kinsman yep. who sent me his list for the top <laughs> oh my, eight must be nice <laughs> scout the field and submit <laughs> that's exactly what he did <laughs> that's exactly oh, we should what look at did. his list later yeah sweet scummy um, it's cool scummy guy it's so scummy guy. oh it looks like our guest is here um yeah hey so yeah, you can just sit right there. Um, grab a mic, okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome our guest. Uh, first, oh no, you baby, David Zikowski is our champion for the the last Legacy League. Oh so. shit, I won it. You won. <laughs> oh, dope. Um, so, so, how does it feel as as the only winner in this room? How does it feel? It feels actually really good. This honestly was my first like win out of a top eight. I've been a finalist like four or five times now and never got the w and always the bridesmaid this is always the bridesmaid but i finally got the ring nice finally got the ring this time so um, it felt really good yeah congratulations it was nice to see uh one of the o2 drop cast members take it down yeah um, finally someone won that i care about right <laughs> <laughs> That is true. Um, so, I guess do you want to talk to us a little about a little bit about the Swiss round. Who's interviewing sure. who here? Sorry, I'm the I'll stop. host. I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> so, you want to talk to us a little bit about your rounds? Sure. So, <laughs> we came up with a new rule that we're allowed to proxy out our whole entire deck. And uh, I was looking at this lands list that did really well in Japan that had like some thought seizes and a bayou in it. So. I went ahead and was like, I'm just going to take this league for fun. I'm going to play some janky lists and have fun. So week one through three, I was on lands. Um, I got my week one. I don't remember entirely who it was. I'm sorry about that. But week two, I got paired against PJ. And normally PJ, like he either locks me out and I can't storm through or I get there. But this time around, I had to play around so much different hate. And he was on his sweet brew of, um, what was it? Blood Moons, Magus and Moons, oh, and yeah. Dark Depths. Yeah. So he plays Dark Depths under a Blood Moon and then gets rid of his own Blood Moon. So it becomes a 2-2. I mean, a 20-20. Yeah. Which, as a lands deck, you're pretty screwed there. And instead of getting rid of his own blood moon. He just beat me down with two, two beaters and took the game easily from me. Um, other than, and then once uh week three rolled around, I think it was me and you, Zach. Yeah. I was on rug control and you fucking two owed me. <laughs> yeah. That was a good match. So you no, were two, one. No, those were good at all. You just yeah. whooped my ass. I scooped both games. Cause it was like, just like by turn four, you were just so ahead of me with lands and, and like you were starting yeah. to like, just take me off my stuff, and yeah, it was it was good. brutal. It was brutal. Yeah, and then yeah, seeing myself be two one, and seeing that it was a shorter league, I thought, all right, well, might as well switch back into ant, and I did. Uh, I went three zero for the second part. Uh, during I think you round three zero, you drew. Oh yeah, so two wins, and then I drew in. Okay. Uh, my week five was against Alexander Tash, which he was 4-0. On Storm as well. On right? Storm as yeah. well. But Senpai stepped in, right? But Senpai stepped in, and he was going for the Gladiator Challenge, which we had a little promotion. If you went undefeated in Swiss rounds, you'd get an extra $15. And I took that from him. Nice. Did not let him do that. Do you give them some pointers afterwards on how to play the deck? Uh, a little here and there. I can't give away all my true, secrets. True, true, true. 
So, you know, it, it was a good match. And then uh, top eight, uh, I was against Killian. He was on four color loam, which is a pretty scary matchup. I think um, it was your worst of the top eight, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, game game one, turn one, he goes chalice on zero. And my hand is LED, LED, Lotus Petal, Infernal Tutor, and I just pick up my cards. I'm like, all right, cool, good game. Um, game two, that was a really tricky one. Uh, he had a Chalice on Zero, a Geddick Teague, and that newer card, Cindervine, that does one damage for every instant or sorcery you cast. The your opponent cast? Yeah. Okay. And, um... On his end step, I echoing truth the chalice. On my turn, I chain of vapored his Gedek Teague and then stormed off, leaving myself at one life, putting wow. lethal tendrils on the field. That is dope. That sounds that amazing. Is like the best finish. Oh my gosh. I've ever heard. <laughs> it was great. So you earned that spot. So then you, yeah. had, the, you had the top four. Top four. Uh, I was against this uh, turbo ish. <laughs> Depths deck. Um, yeah, David beat me. David stomped me 2-0. Okay. <laughs> I did. I did. So what makes it turbo-ish? Are you running the spirit um, guides and lotus petals? No spirit guides, but I, I'm still running lotus petals. I don't really, I mean, I don't really you're like running Mux the maps, Diamond. right? I'm still running maps, but okay. what makes it turbo-ish is that I do run Dark Confidant, so I have a little card draw and more game mid-game. Well, that's slow depths. No, that's, it's not slow depths. Slow depths is Mox Diamonds and stuff where I'm having to pitch lands. I still run Lotus Petals, which allows me to still go off faster. Okay. It's slow. It's, it's fast are you slow running, depths. Are you running um, all the removal in the main that the slow depths no, does? No. Okay. All, all right. my Erupted Keys are sideboard. So I'm okay. still trying to win quickly, yeah. but also like if I can just, like against Miracles Game 1, if I can drop a Dark Confidant and draw some cards, I'm going to do that. Yeah, of course. And it eats that's, swords. So Yeah, that's one of the advantages of yeah. of the slow depths is you get card advantage in that matchup and yeah. it, they have to answer it. So yeah, I'm running four Dark uh, four dark Confidants and then Lotus Petals and no Abrupt Decay's main. So it, it's a weird version, but I, I like it. Cool. Cool. So. Cool. So and you whooped his ass. I whooped did. my ass. I did. 2-0? Uh, yeah, 2-0. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so crappy, too, because game two, I was think I had... that one on stream? It is. It stream, is. Yeah. Tight. So I, I think I had, a, I had a turn three kill, so like he had to kill me on turn two. And, and of course... I brainstorm. <laughs> the brainstorm shows me dark petition, LED, and some kind of ritual. And I'm like, all right, this, this will be lethal. This is enough. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And yeah, it was good. Um, Dead. In the, and then you got the the finalist, the finalist James Z, which he's only played in Zwislak. Zwislak. Ooh, it was it was the battle of the Paul the Polish, the Polish was. war. The, I was, was. going to say po- Pollock? 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 No. Pollock? The Poles. Pollock? 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 The Poles. Poles. The Poles. Poles. Yeah. The Pollock is yeah. appropriate, right? That's just a different is last it like name. Derogatory is what you're. No, I don't. Pole is. Derogatory. Pole is derogatory. Pole is derogatory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pollock. 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 That's yeah. appropriate. It's, That's proper. It it could be derogatory. You know, just whatever tone sure, you say. Sure. Anything. What about like a... uh, Lish? Like a Polish? <laughs> I, think, Polish? <laughs> I think that's new. <laughs> Polish. <laughs> Polish. Yeah. 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 Polish. Yeah. All the lishes. Well, that's why he did this top eight. He polished it off. Ooh, I did. <laughs> And um, yeah, James has only played in two of our leagues and top aided both of them. Wow. So he's a bad player. A horrible player. Yeah, I but agree. I didn't want to give him the trophy, so I went ahead and <laughs> took him down 2 0 as well. Uh, we had some interesting games, but I think Rix's control doesn't have too strong of a matchup against Ant. And I think he's played that in all of our leagues. I Rix's think so, control. yeah. Yeah, and it's been treating him well, but. And boss over here. And boss. And it was at David's yep. house. So we had the home turf advantage. He he just froze us out. He had his air conditioner at 52. Ooh, so <laughs> so nice. we were all cold and he had a hoodie and a jacket and some gloves on. That so. is smart. Oh, that yeah. Good strategy. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's a really good strategy. Yeah. Too bad. Uh, well, James is the runner up. So grats to him. Uh, he's he's a he's a competent player. He's a grinder. He plays all the formats. Yeah. And oh, I think yeah. he's only been playing Legacy for like a year or two or a couple of years. And no, 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 no. He's enough. played he's played at snaps forever. Legacy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's he used to play um 
he just he used to play Maverick a lot. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, which I'm sure he's probably happy that Green White is getting some good printings. I bet. Love. Also, that um, that Tomic guy. Exactly. He goes into Maverick too, probably. Yeah, maybe. And DNT. Can't GSC for him, but what no. Is? But you can still vial him in, and yeah, they don't play vial. Maverick. Alyssa, uh, Alyssa, I see don't play yeah, vial. Yeah, you're right. GSC is your vial. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, dude, congratulations! Yeah, you, thank you. You two owed me. You two owed him. Took home the trophy. It was great. Got a th- ten thousand SB bucks. Oh which yeah, is like a hundred and fifty dollars store credit at Pod. <laughs> oh yeah, gonna that's upgrade my Bayou. That's awesome. Ooh. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations! So, after winning the entire Legacy League, how does the how does the world look from up there? Um, uh, it was a little cloudy and uh, some lightning was going on. <laughs> a storm's a brewing. The people so, look small. Yeah, it was good. Right on, yeah. man. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, you're a proficient storm player. Hey, when luck's on my side. Well, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. Of course, everyone's <laughs> proficient with luck, but no luck. Still, pretty proficient. Like when you played Doomsday, you played like a tier seven deck or some shit, <laughs> and you were still, you know, beating a lot of people. Now that the kill is easier. Mm. Yeah. Then it's just easier. It's yeah. like playing a game, a video game on legendary mode, and then going to normal mode. Exactly. Yeah. That's like how it is. That's he's been exactly playing exactly how it is. Legendary mode for all these years, and now he's playing normal. You mean I don't have to play around bolt, force of will, counter spell? Like, there's yeah. just way less you have to play. Yeah. Uh, play around. I had one fun line that uh, I had lethal next turn, but I still wanted to check if James had a uh, counter spell of some sort. So I purposely did not play my extra land and just off my underground sea being the last black source, cast a dark ritual and gauged James's reaction to it. And his reaction pretty much yelled, I have no counter spells. Yeah, it was- <laughs> so I was like, cool, whatever you draw next turn, I have a thought seize. And I'm killing you. You dead. Yeah, it was funny because Anthony, good. Anthony, and I were doing commentary. And he's like, "Oh, is he going for?" It? He's like, "Dark ritual resolves past turn." <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. I was like, "Oh, he's ch- he's checking." Uh, he's and I, 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 I called. It. I was like, "Oh, dude, James is dead next turn." <laughs> yep. Yeah, James is dead next turn. He's just testing it. And uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, is the Storm versus Grix's control matchup? Do you feel like that's pretty positive in Storm's favor? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, with running two past and flames, they're gonna hem you a couple times, but their clock is so slow that yeah, the hem hurts. But you're not planning to win turn one, turn two, turn three. You're looking at a turn seven kill. Yeah. So sure, the early hems prevent that early kill, but you're not planning for it. Yeah. You're keeping your tutor on top of your deck. You're using cantrips to constantly push that tutor one card deeper, one card deeper. Oh, it's time to kill you. Pick up that tutor. Go for it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, Passing Flames is a great card. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it. So do normal ant lists run two Passing Flames? Or it has. Is it, just, is it just one in the main? It has become the standard. For two? Yeah. Okay. You have like three or four flex slots in the main board. Um, one is a Duress or a Reign of Filth. Mm-hmm. Um. I was on the Reign of Filth build, but currently I'm on the four duress. Okay. Uh, your other flex slot is that dark petition and your second piff. Some people prefer double dark petition, but lately all the lists that have been doing well are using two pass and flames. Yeah. And that's good in a lot of matchups. Yeah. Because there's a lot of hand hate going around right now. It's probably good in the mirror. It's good against turbo depths. It's going to take tear apart your hand with the hymns. Yeah. Grix's control, which is falling out of favor. I yeah. haven't seen as much yeah. of that running around. I think Miracles is, again, rising to the top as the predominant control, um, deck. control deck. It's cheaper, right? Yeah. And better, I think. I think it's better, yeah. Yeah. Plus, if you're going to play Grixis, you play Grixis Delver. And why would you play You Grixis want the Delver? fast clock. That's it's, what control's yeah, yeah. missing. Yeah. 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 Why would you play Grixis Delver if you could just play UR? Well, exactly. But I'm just saying, if you were going to play Grixis, you'd play Grixis Delver. And you'd still be wrong, because Blue Red's where it's at. I think that's where it's at right now, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'll see You'll see next week when I uh, take down uh, Niagara Falls. Niagara. Uh, I'll be happy Sorry, if I... Buddy. If I uh, my goal is to day two. If we can move on from there, we'll set another goal <laughs> at that point. But <laughs> I've been doing Frankie very bad lately. Playing. So Do you know? Storm. Is he? Frankie's playing Storm. Okay. 
Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, right. I can't make it to Niagara, but apparently Wizards decided to give us another one. Ooh. So, Atlanta. Watch I think, out. I think it's like September. Sometime in September is GP Atlanta. Yeah. Legacy. And then, Ooh. so no news on Eternal Weekend. Not yet. So, I don't think it's going to happen. There's trials going on, and Cartagena announced that it will happen. Okay. People need time to plan and they do. make accommodations. Yeah, I mean, it's been November every year. If we For think, October. It's been uh, October, right? It was like Halloween a few years ago when we were there, and then October, November, E. Yeah. yeah. Ohio um, was Halloween time, right? When we went to Cleveland, it was a Halloween because we were downtown Cleveland for Halloween. Oh yeah, that's when we saw the the, the dick and the, vagina, the, the genital mask. Yeah, I still have that picture. <laughs> yeah, next to some genitals. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, and they always announce in January, so it's uh, mid-April, and we got nothing yet. But whatever. I mean, I, I hope they have it right because I yeah, do want to go. But I bet they were waiting for like the GP formats just, to get announced. But they're like, behind on that too. Yeah. Well, they're announcing them on time. Well, they announce. But, are they? they ch- I thought they. Announce them the announcement period. cycle has changed. Oh, so gotcha. I think it's at the end of Q1 they announce like Q3, like they stagger the announcement yeah. so they have time to adjust the formats rather than just throw it out all front up front. Well, from my perspective, it just seems like they're yeah not announcing stuff. I don't know yeah. very. And then we got Vegas, which is modern and limited, and I don't really care about that. But it's side Vegas, events. so I'm down to go for side events and hang out and party since it's a close drive. Yeah. Exactly. That and then Seattle, right. we're going to Seattle. Yeah, hopefully the Vegan, we're gonna the go. Vegas Convention Center again. Yeah, the, yeah, the one that's right next to Westgate. Yep. Okay. And then Seattle's gonna have like thirty-two artists, so uh, we're cool. gonna fly out yeah. there and get art, get signatures. But that's not Legacy. It's, it's like Modern Horizons Limited. So that's gross. We're gonna fly out for signatures and some fish and chips and beer. Have fun. And maybe. a Legacy side of it. A double, yeah, definitely. Maybe. So yeah. definitely but cool. All right. Anything else, David Schakowsky? You got some announcements? I don't think so. I think we covered everything. Mr. Daniel Espinoza. Uh, yeah, May 18th, Snapcasters, Gaming and Espresso. Come play with us. We're going to hit, we're going to crack the 60-player mark. We're going to push it out there. We're going to have 200 concurrent viewers. Like It's going to be our Bix's event yet. So we will see you May 18th at Snapcasters. And then before that, the week prior, May 11th, our last trial for all our Tucson boys. Get that legacy in. Get that buy. And then come on down and see us. We should go to Tucson. Yeah, if you drive, I'm down. Drive. I actually have that weekend off. I'm down to make the drive. Let's Let's go. Let's execute our plan. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just like roadblock them all. We'll just steal all their cards so they can't play in the cities. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good call. Cool. Yeah. They'll leave them in the trunk and you know. (laughs) Yeah. Pull a Ricky Sexton. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. Leave your cards in your trunks, guys. Yeah, that was not a good plan on his part. No. All right. And so that's going to pretty much wrap up this episode. Check out our website, which is azeternalmagic.com. You can find out information about all of our events there, our leagues, the master series. Speaking of which, how much do we have for the masters? Oh, yeah. We've got like $670 already that's lined amazing. up for the masters event. We're not even halfway. Nope. We've got three more city champs so and a at, few more PTs. At this rate, we're going to have like a $1,200, maybe $1,500 Ooh. prize pool. Yeah. Zero entry. Yeah. All you got to do is be good at magic. Qualify. Qualify. Yeah. Now, if you don't know how to qualify and you're in the state of Arizona, come check out our events to qualify for the Masters Series and play for twelve, maybe $1,500 in prizing. Yeah. All you have to do is either A, take down a city championship here in Arizona, or B, check out the point spread. Every event that you play that's part of the series, if you do well, it will be awarded with points. And then we're going to have five invites from points uh, or excuse me, five invites from the city championship winners, one previous invite for the last year's championship, and then 10 spots for points winners. So it's going to be a 16-player tournament, and you can come out and try to uh, try to take some of that cash. Yeah, but if we all scrub out, we're all three of us are doing commentary. It's going to be amazing. It'll be the O2 Dropcast commentary crew. I don't know if I do commentary, man. I don't know. We'll we're, do it. We're going to talk... And then once in a while, I'll say what's happening on screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a live. <laughs> oh, looks like they are still playing Magic. Um, some guy, I'm not sure who he is. I don't really care about him, but he just played a card. So how was your day again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So that's going to wrap up the O2 Dropcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you to the Arizona community. Uh, without all of the people here, 
uh, we wouldn't be doing this. So thank you for participating and uh, look forward to our next event at Snapcasters. Hell yeah. And that's going to do it. This is the O2 Dropcast. I'm Zach Zent. With us today, we had Mr. David Schakowsky. Later all. Mr. Daniel Espinosa. Peace. Welcome to episode number something. Fuck. Eight or nine?